Hi everyone, so now that we study principal component analysis. The principal component analysis, or PCA, summarizes the p variables by smaller number of variables, z1 to z cube. So each of the zi is linear combination of x1 to xp here. So here, if the coefficients are very large, zi can be very large. Um, so we standardize this, and usually we restrict the size of phi is equal to 1. So z sub i is called the i-th principal component. So idea is that the z1 includes most important information, and the z2 includes the second most important information, and so on. So now we want to discuss how to determine z1, z2 up to z cube. So at first, the z1 is determined so that the largest variance of x1 to xp is included. So we want to explain, I want to explain that this by one simple example of uh, p is equal to 2. So suppose observations are distributed um, like this. Then you can see that majority of information included in x1 and x2 is represented by the projected lengths onto this straight line. So if each observation, for each observation, that we think about the position on this red straight line, it almost represents the all information of x1 and x2. So actually, the z1 is determined by this direction. So to be exact, the, this is the coefficient for z1. So this. OK, so now that we want to discuss the how to determine z2. So at first, we consider residual of z1. So that means for each data points that we have residual here. So we think about these vectors. And then we determine z2 so that um, it is uncorrelated to z1. And the largest var variance of the this residual is achieved by choosing best coefficients. So in this way, the z1 includes most important information, z2 includes second most important information, and so on. In this way, even if we have hundreds of variables, uh, we expect the first few variables includes the most information of x1 to xp. This is another use of principal component analysis. So since the z1 and the z2 includes most information of x1 to xp, actually we can approximate x1 to xp, each of x1 to xp, by the, these uh, first few principal components. So here, horizontal axis is z1 and vertical axis is z2. And these vectors are x1 to xp. So you can see that this model is x1. And assault is x2. And rape is x3. And urban population is x4. Then you can see, for example, murder is explained by um, maybe some positive coefficient 1.2 times z1 minus 1.1 times z2 maybe. So um, in this way that we can characterize this x1 to xp. For example, the murder is assault are a similar phenomenon, but urban population is totally the different variable. So this is another example of PCA with p is equal to 3 and q is equal to 2. 
So this is three-dimensional space, but uh, we want to summarize the data um, by the two components. So basically, projection onto the, this plane includes the majority of information of these observations. And the, this plane is represented by this right pane also. So even if the entire information have three-dimensional information, the, if we um, map this onto two-dimensional space, still the, you can see that we can separate these three groups by these boundaries. So this is the explanation of PCA. And the one uh, useful the information for PCA is proportions of variance explained. So we can calculate how much of variation x1 to xp is explained by the first few principal components. So it helps to decide the how many principal components are necessary for analysis. Uh, for example, in this example, the first principal component includes the 60% 60% of variability in x1 to xp. And second component includes maybe a little more than 20% of variation. So this is cumulative contribution of factors. So if we include first two factors, it includes almost 85 to 90% of information. So you can see the first component includes maybe the 62 or 63%, and this includes maybe 22%. So in total, so this includes almost 85% of information. So in this way, even if p is very large, such as 100, you can see that probably the p is equal to 4 is sufficient to express most information, since the almost the 100% of variability is explained by the first four components. Okay, so now that you can solve the question on principal component analysis. Question 3. 26.4 in Canvas. Okay, see you then.